Good morning. Let's stand. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Oh, his free.
sees a house of worship. This is a place of praise where every demon trembles, where we proclaim your name. This is a house of healing. Our hearts are full of faith. You have our full attention. You have the final say. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. There's resurrection power. Your blood runs through our veins. Your kingdom triumphs over. Even the coldest grave. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. Everything to the feet of Jesus, everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. I still believe you're moving, I still believe you're speaking. God, I believe you're working all things for good. I fix my eyes on heaven. God, I receive your vision. God, I believe your word. Oh, thanks for good. I still believe your mood. I still believe your speaking. God, I believe your word. Oh, thanks for good. I fix my eyes on heaven. God, I receive your vision. God, I believe your word. All things for good. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We see come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles.
sing this, all the saints. All the saints and angels bow before your
on, sing it to him. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. One more time. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. He's worthy this morning. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. If you believe that this morning, would you just lift your voice and heart one more time and tell Him in your own words, in your own way, how worthy He is. Lord, You're worthy of all praise. You're worthy of all honor. You're worthy of all blessing. You're worthy of all glory. You are worthy of it all. And I pray today that this is not just a song that we sing. But it's something we truly believe and we truly demonstrate from our heart to you that you are worthy of it all. You are worthy. You have proven that you are worthy of it all. If you believe that this morning, would you give them a hand clap of praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can be seated. It's so good to see you here today. Thank you so much for coming and being with us. And I want to uh, congratulate you for remembering to change your clocks. We'll find out in about an hour who forgot. Come on. <laughs> but I'm glad you're here today. And uh, we want to welcome you. We want to welcome all of our visitors as well. Thank you so much for coming, and uh, we appreciate that. We want to welcome our online audience as well. And uh, we're, we're so honored that you've given us access into your life. Before we honor the Lord today with our tithe and offering, I want to uh, make some very important announcements. Uh, tonight at 6 o'clock will be our journey class in the House Blend Cafe. Also, tonight at 6 o'clock will be our youth service. We're going to have a powerful time, so make sure that your junior high students and your high school students are here for that. That's at 6 o'clock in our youth facility. And then uh, this Wednesday at 7 o'clock, everyone's invited back for our connect groups. We have some incredible Bible studies and discipleship programs for every age, every phase of the family, and you're welcome uh, back for that this Wednesday at 7 o'clock. So let's get ready now to worship the Lord with our giving. Let me make one important announcement concerning this. Uh, we have a very special guest here today that we're looking forward to hearing from him. Doyle Dykes is here with us, and of course, Pastor is going to introduce him. We will be uh, receiving a special love offering for him and his ministry at the end of the service, okay? So if you're wanting to sow into his ministry, into his life, then you'll have an opportunity to do that at the end of the service. Right now, we're going to honor God with our tithes and with our offerings and missions giving and seed sowing and uh, really, like I said, like to say, however God leads you and speaks to you to give as well. So let's do that now. Father, thank you for this opportunity to be in your presence, God, to worship you. And Lord, where we are matters. Where we are matters. Places matter. Environments matter. And Lord, we were created to be in your presence, to walk with you and to have fellowship with you. And the fact that we're here today in this room, in this building together, is not something to be taken lightly. Because where we are determines what grows in us and where we are determines what dies in us and where we are helps determine what we become. 
And we're thankful today that we have an opportunity to be here in this place. And what makes this place special is the fact that you're here. That you're here. That's what makes this place special. That's what makes it different. And we recognize that. And we take the time to honor you with our giving, with our first fruits, with the tithe and offerings, God, and our substance, we worship you with it. Because your word tells us to do that. But we don't want to just sing you're worthy of it all and not demonstrate it. We want to live it. And we ask these things. I pray this prayer. We do this now. In the name of Jesus, the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. God bless you as you come and give this morning. We want to remind our online audience that you can give on the website, hopi.cc. There's a giving link there. Also, we have text to give. There we go. Information is there on the screen. Uh, Thank you so much for giving. God bless you for your continued support of the House of Prayer. get nervous when it don't take very long to take the offering. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here today. I appreciate you being here. We have, uh, we have, as Pastor Mike said, a very special guest. Uh, Teresa and I have known Doyle for, uh, I don't know, I guess about 40 years almost now. Uh, he and Teresa did the instrumentation on her mother's Back then, it was a record album in a studio in Cleveland, Tennessee, a number of years ago. And he was supposed to come in and just play some guitar licks, and he ended up being the engineer, I guess, or whatever you call it. He put the whole thing together, the whole album, and uh, did a marvelous job. And uh, then I was invited to Teresa's father's church where he was pastoring, and we met him. I met him there. They'd already all met, all met him. And um, he's become one of my favorite people in the world. How I many of you know there's a lot of people in this world? There, there are. And uh, he's one of the very best. And I like to tell people, um, you know, when they talk to me about Noah Doyle, uh, they wonder, you know, why I have such a connection with him. And uh, I like to tell them, well, one reason is because he's not only the greatest guitar player, finger style guitar player in the world. Now, the reason I say that, I read in a magazine one time, you know, I read it in a magazine one time, that uh, they, they inter- inter- interviewed, uh, who's that guy that was pretty good? Chet Atkins. <laughs> That's a joke. He's maybe, maybe the world's best, you know. They interviewed Chet Atkins and asked him about finger style guitarist and asked him if he was the, the greatest and he said well he said I'm probably one of the top three and he said um, me Merle Travis and that preacher boy uh, the old Dykes and I think he was playing uh, guitar on Hee Haw now some of y'all don't know what Hee Haw is okay he Hall used to be a television show we used to watch all the time because it was uh, it's funny and had a lot of the Grand Ole Opry um, performers there and all and Grandpa Jones was uh, regular and Doyle was a teenage boy he became his uh, lead guitarist for Grandpa Jones and uh, it was known in the um, in the realm of entertainment there that. Doyle was a devout Christian, and he had a testimony of 
uh, for the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And he's stayed true to that testimony for all of these years. And so people say, well, you know, why are you so close to him, blah, blah, blah. And I say, he's a better person than he is a guitar player. And, you know, since uh, Chet Atkins is gone and Merle Travis is gone, that makes him the best fingerstyle guitar. Guitar is certainly one of the best in all of the world. But he's a better person than he is a guitar player. And that's what makes him so special to me. And I love him very much, Trace and I do. Uh, love him very much. And we're blessed to have him here with us today and we're just going to let him take his liberty however God leads him uh, he may be a little bit entertaining I don't know but he'll certainly have something to say uh, to encourage us in the Lord before he goes my friend would you welcome him Dole Dykes I appreciate that.
Jesus There's just something About That name Master Savior Jesus Like the fragrance After the rain Jesus sing it loud Jesus my Jesus let all heaven and earth proclaim kings and kingdoms Will all pass away. We're experiencing that. But there's something about that name. Sing that again. Kings and kingdoms may all pass away. But there's something about that name arrangements while you wait there folks but uh praise the lord <clears throat> yeah i've got a little nice little uh if it was on my guitar it'd be cool wouldn't it <laughs> a little distortion on my mic or maybe it might be the check one two check Check. Hello. One, two,
<clears throat> yeah, I was, I was uh, raised in church. I, I, some of you know my testimony as far as where I came from. My granddad was a choir director at our church for 33 years. My dad played in, in the band. My brother played the piano when he started when he was seven. By the time he was eight or nine, he was already up in church playing. And uh, I couldn't play anything. Took two years of piano for nothing. And uh, I'm I just not smart enough to play a piano. I don't think it just didn't get, I didn't get it until I started playing a guitar. Then I understood more about the piano. It's kind of weird. You know, like. It's kind of like the thumb is the left hand. You know, it's kind of like a gospel piano player. Well, I heard one guy say, gospel piano player, that means your left hand don't know what your right hand's doing. <laughs> you know, I've heard a few of those gospel piano players. <laughs> and Teresa, my brother one time, he's a great musician. He actually played a song one time. It was an old gospel song. He played the, the left hand in one key and the right hand in another key. I don't know how he did that. But it was quite remarkable, really. It sounded terrible, but it was still amazing that he could do that. And so I, I finally figured it out. But I didn't start playing the guitar until I got saved. I got saved when I was 11. I raised my hands and said, Lord, give me a job to do, and I'll always tell people about you. And it was just right after that that God gave me a desire to play the guitar, and I've been playing ever since. I'm in my 60s now. Somebody asked me, are your fingers insured? I said, no, but they're on Medicare. Does that count? So I've been doing this basically all of my life I mean, since I was a little boy. I was raised in church. I walked out of situations, even a, a chance to meet Elvis in the next room because I didn't feel right being there because they were drinking and started partying. And I, I walked out. I said, I wasn't raised to do this. I'm out of here. And I left. I've had a stubborn faith and love for God since I was a kid. And I just have. I'm, just, I'm not, too, well, thank you for that. But I'm just telling you the truth. I mean, if we really believe that Jesus is the Son of God, we should never be ashamed to say the name of Jesus. You know, and, and I, I, yeah, I wrote this book a few years ago, and I'm not plugging it, but I do have some in the foyer. I heard somebody say, I, I turned, tuned in on the Opry for about 10 minutes last night, 20 minutes. And uh, I heard Jeannie Seeley, I heard, I've known her since the 70s. She says, well, you know, all of us uh, entertainers have, have, you know, have lost a lot through this COVID thing. And so we've just tried to reach out to as many people as we can on social media and all of those things, you know. And I also got involved and I, I tried to reach out to all of you. And she says, I was wondering if you needed an extension on your auto warranty. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so whatever it takes, I guess. Oh, my goodness alive. God has helped us, and he's helped us through all of, all of these things, and we'll continue to do that. He's faithful to us, so why not be faithful to him? See, your testimony is more than going back to what I just said. I don't have to tell everybody, hey, how are you doing? You know, you know, when I was 11 years old, I gave my heart to the Lord, and he gave me a desire to play the guitar, and I've been playing it ever since. You know, you don't have to go through your personal testimony every time to be a witness to somebody about Jesus. I heard, I heard Ricky Skaggs. I've known Ricky a long time, but I heard him get up and say at an awards meeting or awards show or something, he said, well, first of all, I'd like to, to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, I heard a lot of people get up and say, well, I just want to thank God. God bless y'all. You know, but you rarely hear them, even in a lot of Christian music, to say the name of Jesus Amen. That every knee shall bow, including Putin or whoever or Trump or whoever in the world, you, me, pastor, all of us, we will bow one day at the feet of, we will bow at the name of Jesus. Amen. To some, it's going to be a horrible experience. For me, I don't think it will. I don't think for you either, right? I'm looking forward to the day. Did you see what was up here on the board a while ago? 
the, the, the elders uh, the cast their crowns at his feet. We're talking about a heaven. We're talking about some place that we think about, we dream about. We don't really know that much about it, you know. I remember I wrote a song a long time ago. My daddy was a preacher in a little country place. He preached the word of God throughout his days. I wrote this when I was a Grandpa Jones. He often spoke of heaven and seeing Jesus' face. I remember when my daddy used to say, Heaven, there's a city with streets of purest gold, with mansions as far as you can see. Just outside that city, within the hills beyond, God made a place in heaven for country folks like me. Well, you may say, well, chapter and verse on that. Well, chapter and verse that it's not. Someday I'll see my daddy in that better land. We'll sing the praise of God for eternity. But here it is. But to see the face of Jesus and feel those nail prints in his hands, that will be worth everything to me. In heaven there's a city with streets of purest gold. Mansions as far as you can see. <laughs> oh, but just outside that city, within the hills beyond, are the Church of Christ folks. Shh, they don't know. They think they're the only ones here. I'm just kidding. God made a place in heaven for country folks like me. God made a place in heaven for country folks like me. <laughs> well, I might get a few emails on that if this goes out. But, but the thing is, that really, actually, nobody knows exactly how heaven is going to be. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be unbelievable. It's going to blow your mind how awesome it is, how wonderful it will be. But while we're here, you are the only Jesus most folks will ever see. You and I, you and me. I, I, I had written this book, what I was going to say a while ago, and they sent it to this uh, big uh, outfit. It was a Christian network, and it was a program that this person wanted me to be on. He worked for the network. He said, yeah, we know Dole. We already had a book out. He just doesn't have a hook. And the guy said, oh, what are you, uh, I beg your pardon, what are you talking about, a hook? He said, well, he doesn't have a hook, you know. And uh, he's never been on drugs and never, you know, been the way like that, you know, and alcohol or he's never kind of got out in the world. And, uh, well, I'm just kind of thankful I never had a hook, I guess. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But the fact is, God delivered me from drugs. He delivered me from alcoholism. He delivered me from all the isms. Amen? He just delivered me before I ever got into it. And, and that, that, to me, that's an okay testimony. Maybe that is a hook. But the thing is, that, that shouldn't deter your, you from thinking that you have a great testimony because the testimony is not about us. It's about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as Ricky said. I want to thank him. Mention his name. You know, a lot of people don't mind. Can I talk a little bit this morning? They don't mind the principles of Christ. You know, if you really think about it, you know, every success seminar you ever go into in business is based on the teachings of Christ. You know, in fact, John Maxwell, who I've worked with before, you know, he'll go through all this. He said, if you want to know where I got all of these ideas, come back and after uh, the break and I'll, I want to share something with you. And he just preaches Christ. He said, this is where it came from. Amen. See, because a lot of people don't mind the principles of Christ, but the person of Christ is a threat to their lifestyle. Amen. 
So let's not, be a, let's not be ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. you believe that? Praise God. I think this is a time that we should to, uh, to have a, a good witness in a, and share our testimony with people every day. I'll talk more about it. I'm going to play a song that I'm learning, but I'm, I, I call it Friends Near and Far, and it's a lot of folks that uh, through the years and in fact the last couple of years that I've lost a lot of friends You know, see, songs come sometimes, you know, in your spirit. You hear it a lot of times in your head. You know, there's a lot of songs I've written in my head, you know, like... And, 
uh, there, there's a song I wrote one time. That, that came, it's been a long time since I played that. That song came in my head. I wrote that in my head. It, I was traveling all, all the way through Switzerland, went to left Germany, went through Switzerland, and got into a, a beautiful place called Lake Como, Italy. And I was with these other guys, and they were talking, and I was in the back seat, and I just kept praying for this guy that I'd met. It was a soldier. I call that the changing of the guard. I had met him at this trade show, which was a secular show, the year before, and uh, every time I would play, I'd see this guy, and I finally went, come here, and uh, he had shorter hair, and, uh, and I said, you're one of us. Are you a soldier? Are you an American soldier? He said, what, what, I gave it away, my hair? I said, well, no, I just kind of figured. And he says, uh, I said, you've been watching everywhere I go, I see you. I said, won't you start helping me carry my stuff? <laughs> <You know? laughs> and he said, yeah, man. He says, I've just taken it. He says, especially, he said, when you play those hymns. He said, because I was in a secular situation here where there were thousands of people walking through these aisles, and I would represent guitar companies I was representing several, an amp company, and if, and I would start playing, and it would just clog up the aisles, and we'd have 150 people just standing there. And I'd end up, and I'd see them, I'd end up like, how great thou art. Or the Lord's Prayer. And you could hear a pin drop, and trade shows, music trade shows are loud. Suddenly, it just got real quiet. And it's amazing to see what God can do. It's like he parted the waters. And, uh, and this guy, look, he says, man, I, I uh, yeah, I just uh, been thinking about a lot of things, but he said, your music just uh, really touched my heart. So I, I just loaded him down with guitar picks and, and uh, whatever I had. I think back then I just had CDs or cassettes or something. I don't know. I go way back, eight tracks, long play. And, uh, and so anyway, I loaded him down with stuff. And uh, about three months later, I got 
a note from him, First Sergeant Aaron D. Jagger. I'll never forget his name. He says, Doyle, I was, I'm a tank platoon commander. And he, he said, I was in Bosnia. We had to leave. I'm a musician, so I knew about the trade show. But I never thought I'd meet anybody like you there. He says, because you really uh, got me to thinking about things that I need to be thinking about. In fact, he said, the Spirit of God really dealt with me that day. He said, I've been living with another girl in Bosnia. I have a family who is in Frankfurt. He says, we have five daughters. He says, I went back, broke up with my girlfriend, went back to Frankfurt, begged my wife's forgiveness. And he says, of all, and, and she did. She took me back in. And he said, God has restored my life in Christ. He's restored my family. He says, I feel like I got my music back. It's kind of like a country music song played backwards. He got the wife back, the, the dog, the, the guitar, and the whole, you know what I mean, the kids. You know what I'm saying? All because all I did, I didn't have to say anything. All I did was just, oh, look at this. What an opportunity. How great thou art. Amen. My Jesus, I love thee. Holy, holy, holy. And he starts hearing this thing, and I'd play, you know, uh, <clears throat> What a Friend We Have in Jesus, and put a secular song on top of it, and then go back to that. Things like that. This guy gave his heart to the Lord. And I had just seen him, and on my way out of there to, to go to Italy, we were playing some dates over there. I couldn't even find the light switch. I just found my guitars that went just like this, and I just floundered around, and, I, and I, I, put, I took the guitar out of the case, and I played what was in my head. It was exactly what I just played for you right there. You know, that's a God thing. I, didn't know, I had to learn how to play it, but that one, it just flowed. It's, a, it's just an amazing thing. That other one, the first one, I'm still learning that, but I've been writing that song for a while. You see, because if you're in Christ, Christ is in you. Amen. The hope of glory. And so I want his glory to be revealed in my life, in my music. The two greatest commandments, a lawyer went to Jesus, what's the greatest thing in the, well, in the law, in the, in, 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 to us in the Bible, Jesus said these two things. You can hang on these two pegs, you can hang the whole deal on it. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is likened to it, love your neighbor as yourself. And if you do that, you don't have to go around and say, well, I got saved when I was 11 years old and da 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 You know what I mean? You just live a testimony in front of people. Later on, I found out Aaron Jagger was, uh, was sent over not far from my house in Georgia teaching other guys how to shoot the tank. And he asked me if I want to go over there. I said, no tanks. <laughs> when he told me the destruction of those things, it was unbelievable what one tank can do. But I asked him if he would go to this prayer breakfast with me over at Easter. So he met me at the Cracker Barrel in Dalton, Georgia. I took him down there, drove him down there, and he shared his testimony with me. And what a lift it was to my heart. Amen. And I said, can you share that with these guys here today? And right in the middle of my program, suddenly, it wasn't about Doyle Dykes. I said, I want to introduce someone to you. Had no, nothing was planned. He got up and just out of the blue just shared his testimony. And some of those old guys, they were dressed in camo and everything. I mean, they were just probably rather been hunting that day. But here they are at this prayer breakfast because one of their friends asked them to be there. And they gave their hearts to the Lord. Amen. That's what a testimony can do. That's what a witness for Christ can do. And we can all do that. And, uh, and then I shared on a CD the song that I just played. I had recorded it, and it was a surprise. I gave him a copy before it came out, and I recorded it with a whole orchestra. And I call it The Changing of the Guard. It was because of the change of that man's life. Thank you, Jesus. It wasn't long after that that he was sent to Iraq, and, and he told me, he says, I, I, if we go to war with Iraq, he says, I, I won't be able to retire. He'd already planned on going to Bible school, and, and, uh, and he was blown up with an IED, lost his life. But Aaron's with Jesus. He's with the Lord. You see, 
even right after I got saved, I, I, even at school, I, I had this little Bible, and I wasn't trying to get it. I remember one, one kid, and I've probably told this here before. I don't know. I can't, I can't remember what I did two weeks ago or last week. I can't even remember where I was last week till, till I picked up my guitar. I was in Texas because I had it tuned to a song. And there was a boy who said, Doyle, you, you got that book with you? You know, I thought he was going to make fun of me. And I had my little Gideon Bible. And I shared, uh, yeah, he says, is there anything in that book for me? And I shared Romans 10, 9 and 10. That if thou shalt confess in thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God is raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And, uh, and I said, Harold, do you want to accept Christ? And Harold got saved. And I said, and uh, the, the second part of that verse... For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Tell others about him. He said, I promise I will. It was months later when I got into the 10th grade, was at another school, I asked someone where Harold was. He said, well, you didn't know that Harold lost his life. He went to the beach in the undertow, we call it riptide, they call it these days, took him out before they could get him, Harold drowned. That was in the 60s. Harold is with Jesus. Aaron Jagger is with Jesus. You know why? Because a kid that went to school just said, I'm just going to be myself and I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. That was me. But this can be you as well. And I hope it is. Uh, man, there's so many illustrations I can give. Last year, right after I was here, I got a call from the Grand Ole Opry. They said, we need you to come and play. And I thought, well, I mean, I thought it was the other way around. I should be calling them, you know. They said, we need somebody that doesn't need a band. We need to give our band a break because we, we can't allow other people to bring their bands in, and we need somebody that don't need anybody. And I'm thinking, what you don't know is I can't afford anybody. <laughs> I was forced into this. And so at the beginning of the, uh, the beginning of the year, I always ask God to give me a word for that year. And for this year, he said, do what you do in 2022. And so this is what I did. Combination on the wall bash, hand and ball. That's right.
Y'all remember this song? By the way, I played uh, How Great Thou Art right after that. And I didn't have to say anything. The Holy Ghost just filled the house. Isn't that amazing? So he opened the door through Wabash Cannonball, but he closed it. <laughs> I mean, he didn't close the door, but we closed the program with How Great Thou Art. Amen. And, all, and the heaven's door opened. Praise the Lord. In fact, they, they told me, they said, you know, you can't visit with anybody. You have to go directly to your room. You have to come dress as you're going to be on stage. You can't stand on the side of the stage. You can go to the bathroom, but you've got to go back to your room. We'll come get you when it's time for you to play. You must enter stage left, exit stage right, and immediately leave the building. And they had a mask waiting on me that said, Grand Ole Opry, when I got there. Well, I kept the mask. <laughs> So with all that, I said, Lord, with all these restrictions, they had to do that. I said, Lord, I just thank you, Lord, that I am free in the Holy Ghost tonight. Lord, I just pray that you'll fill the house. And the manager of the Opry came back in. And he says, we need more Wabash Cannonball here at the Grand Ole Opry and How Great Thou Art. So they had me back. Praise the Lord. Now we're talking about doing a, a record of Grand Ole Opry songs. But see, that's what you do. When you, when you honor God, uh, God will honor you. I was on the BBC one time, and every time somebody says, well, don't talk about the Lord because don't get religious because da-da-da-da-da-da. One, one, in fact, one guy said, they kill people over here for that. In fact, they showed me a bar and said, that bar has been blown up more than any building in, in the history of the world by the IRA. And so the next thing I find myself on the, uh, the BBC, and I was playing in Ireland that night, and Haley was with me, and they said, whatever you do, don't get really, and they prompted me on the way over there, and I looked over at Haley, and I just touched her on the hand, and we were in a, a taxi, and I said, watch, anytime God says that, he's going he's gonna to open a door. And so we get in there, and this guy's all tatted up, and he had it. All kinds of piercings and everything. He's a really cool afternoon DJ, kind of rock and roll zoo guy, you know, real cool. Very, very nice. And he had that Irish accent, and we played some things and uh, had a lot of fun. And he says, well, I understand you do hymns, songs of the church on the guitar. What is that like? And I looked over at Haley, and <laughs> I said, okay, here it goes. I said, well, we'll show you. All of a sudden, I just, I just broke out into this. started singing in English, how sweet, and boy, I tell you, the Spirit of God was in that room, and when we finished, he goes, whoa, I forgot the guy was even there, to be honest with you, you know, and I looked up at him, and he had chill bumps, man, you ought to have seen those old, <laughs> those tattoos were standing out like never before, he says, wow, he said, people, he says, in Ireland, and it went all over Ireland. He says, I feel something here very, very different. It's wonderful. Amen. It's the Spirit of God when you just be yourself. You know, and uh, I can tell you so many times that some, every time they said, well, you know, you better not share Christ because, you know, da 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 let me, let me share a scripture with you. Is that okay? You know, I remember, remember what Billy Graham said. If you were arrested for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? Amen. So 
people say to me all the time, it, uh, because if you love the Lord the, uh, your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and you love your neighbor as yourself, you'll be a witness. You will be a witness. In fact, uh, some people say, I've had people tell me before, because I go in these secular situations with my guitar, and they say, well, it must be really hard to talk about the Lord in a secular situation. <laughs> I said, it's hard not to. It's hard not to. When you love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, and thank you for what you said a while ago, you know, and I appreciate that because I remember this old preacher said one time, well, we love having Brother Doyle. We like his guitar pl playing, but he says, the thing I like about Brother Doyle's he said, he loves God. And back at that time, I'm thinking, doesn't everybody love God? No. They don't love God. Not everybody loves God. Amen. But if you love him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, you'll be a witness for him. In fact, would there be enough evidence against you to convict you, right? Where's that evidence come from? A witness. Amen. From a testimony. I wrote this down. I have this thing uh, I have this thing I started, uh, a YouTube thing uh, during COVID. And my, my daughter said, Dad, you already have your own YouTube channel. I said, well, I didn't know that. When did you do that? She said, you got several hundred subscribers. I said, well, you didn't tell me that. And I said, I've been sending you these little videos. So I went and got me a better camera and started making more videos. And now we're almost 13,000 subscribers. And, uh, and I thought, well, you know, I, I've been doing these guitar lessons, and it's all about the guitar. I thought, I'm going to start talking about the Lord. And I saw Hickok 45, and it shoots the guns. I had old love old Hickok 45. He's an old school teacher, and he does this thing called Sunday shoot-around. Well, I thought, well, I can do that and talk about the Lord, and I call mine Sunday string-along. And we have thousands of people now that watch my Sunday string along. And that's another reason it was late getting out yesterday because I couldn't get it downloaded. I, and it wasn't on this morning. And I got this note. And, and uh, this guy told me not long ago, he says, well, Doyle, I'm in a wheelchair now, so your string along is my church. I said, well, I didn't know that. Why? I didn't know you were in a wheelchair. He said, yeah, man. On my way from the hotel to here, Wayne Moss says, what happened? Are you all right? I missed church today. I said, we're going to have to go to the later service because <laughs> it's still downloading. Let me tell you who Wayne Moss is. You ever heard this? He made that up. That's Wayne Moss. He's a Nashville cat. And so he said, man, I, I got all my friends watching your Sunday string along. And I just had the idea, well, why don't I just take this YouTube channel and start preaching a little bit? And it's working. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. That's just like God, isn't it? Revelation 12, 11. We are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of our testimony. Praise the Lord. Do you believe that? If you want to be an overcomer, Haley uh, sang a song at Saddleback one time. We were over there playing. And they said, can we use your song on our Celebrate Recovery record? And so she's on all these Celebrate Recovery CDs that they send out for the last several years. And it's called Prayer for Grace. But here's Celebrate Recovery Program. Part of our recovery process is by sharing our hope in Christ with others. And, and this is a quote. It is a proof of your faith. Many people will praise God because you obey the good news of Christ, the gospel that you say you believe, and because you freely share with them and with all others. Celebrate Recovery. But you know what they also put after that? 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 13. That's a scripture out of the Bible. Amen? And see, because it will help you, it will give you strength to recover whatever you need. Amen? And uh, those that believe in the Son of God have the testimony of God in them. 1 John 5, 10. They have the testimony of God in them. It's in them. 
Here's another one I love. I really like. This is great. Your lives are echoing the master's word. The news of your faith in God is out. We don't even have to say anything anymore. You are the message. And this is 1 Thessalonians 1.8 from the Message Bible. Amen? You are. You are the message. You don't have to say anything. So uh, sometimes when I get up, I don't have to say a word. Just get up and do what you do. Do what you do in 2022, and the Lord will bless it. Y'all remember uh, White Rose for Heidi? I was going to play. How many of you ever heard White Rose for Heidi? How many don't know what in the world I'm talking about? Raise your hand. If you don't know what Heidi, okay, years ago, I went to, I, I, I came home from this. Can I share this real quick? What time is it? I think I'm the only one having to go to Albuquerque, so maybe I, give me a little bit of time. <laughs> oh, my Lord. I'm driving my son's truck to Los Angeles. Can you believe that for him? Anyway. You think I love my son? You think, you know, think about the Heavenly Father's love way more than I could ever love my son. Here's the, here's the song. Play a little bit of it. shorter version but I came in off of the trip one night and it was 1980 and I had left the Grandpa Jones show went into full-time ministry 
and moved back to my hometown of Jacksonville, Florida. We had this little house. I came in. My wife met me at the door because I had a full day in South Georgia. They didn't go that day. And she said, they're, they're yours. Have fun. <laughs> and she went to bed. And, uh, and so we were going to say our prayers. And, and uh, I was, they asked me to tell them a story. It was like 2.30 in the morning. And I said, okay, we'll say our prayers. And we said our prayers. And it was so late, I just said a little poem prayer. Heidi, my oldest daughter, said, Daddy, can we ask God for something? And Holly was already asleep. She was two. Heidi was four. And I said, well, you need to go to sleep, Heidi. She said, can we ask God for something? I said, okay, what is it you'd like to have? I knelt by her bed. She says, I'd like to have a rose. You think he'd bring me one? And she was so serious. I've just been talking about childlike faith to somebody that we and studying about it. And so we asked God for a rose. The next night... We, we were going to say our prayers, and her hands start shaking, and I look, and she got these big, we call them alligator tears. You know what that is in Louisiana. And I said, what's wrong, Heidi? She said, you think he forgot? I said, what, who, you know? <laughs> Why didn't God bring my rose to me today? I, and uh, I said, well, you know, what do you say? I said, well, we didn't mention the color. She says, well, I was thinking of a white one. Boy, when she said that, they were hard to find back then. You didn't go down to Safeway or Kroger or whatever to find a white rose. You had to order one. And I had to go out of town to Deland, Florida, to Teresa's mom and dad's church. I'd never been there before, but I met them when I did her record that you just mentioned. And so I went down to this little small church, and I played my heart out. And uh, your dad says, well, can you come over for refreshments? And I said, yeah, I'll be right over. And I put, put my guitar away. And, and, uh, and suddenly this lady just kind of burst through the back door. Nobody was in. He'd been gone 10 minutes or so. And this lady walked in with these big thick glasses. She's, are you Doyle Dykes? I said, yes. God told me to bring you something from my garden. It was easy to see that she was autistic. I didn't even know that word back then, but she was special. She came up to me and she had something in aluminum foil. I was in my garden. God told me to bring you this. And, uh, and I said, okay. And I said, well, I'll enjoy eating this from your garden. I thought it was carrot or something. I didn't know what it was. In Florida, we call a garden, we think of vegetables, you know. And she handed me this, and I, she said, well, you better look at it. I wouldn't eat that. And so I, I peeled the foil back, and there was one little white rose. And I didn't tell anybody about it. And this is like an hour and a half or so from my house, at least maybe two hours. And so I thought, oh, my Lord. And I told her, I said, this isn't mine. And she said, well, God told me to give you that, Brother Dykes. I'd never met her, never been to your church, you know. And, uh, and, she's, and I told her, I said, I told her the story about Heidi. And she said, well, that's nice. And she walks out just like, that's it. She just, you know, that's nice. I thought, is that what angels do? Okay, you know, <laughs> and uh, I, I, I went over to the parsonage, and of all things, they said, well, my daughter and her husband are coming over, and it was Ron and Teresa. That was the night I met them in 1980 when I met this little white rose lady, and she gives me this rose, and I tell them the story, and we're all like in tears. They said, oh, my Lord, and uh, your mom put it in, let me get take that, you know, and she took control and put it in water, and I got the rose home to Heidi, and I drive up in the driveway, she runs out, and I said, there's a present for you, and she's, she, she grabbed, grabbed me around that, good to have you home, daddy, gave me a big hug like a four-year-old, you know, and I reach over, and I said, there's a present, she said, for me, it's my rose, isn't it, I knew he'd bring it, mommy, mommy, God brung my rose, and I could still hear her little voice, and she's a nurse anesthetist today. She puts people to sleep, kind of like I am you. I can feel it. <laughs> and so uh, let, me, let me finish this. Uh, it, so I told that story. I didn't tell it for a long time. And uh, people said, well, you should tell that story more often. So everywhere I go, I start telling a story. I got with Taylor Guitars. They said, it's time for you to have your own model. And on all the, the models, and there were several thousand that they made, all around the world, they have a white rose. So if I was playing in Japan, if I was playing in South Africa, if I was playing Australia, New Zealand, which I did, China, mainland China, I'm all over the world. Why is there a white rose on your guitar? Places like Hiroshima, places I never thought I would go. And I got, to, and I look up and I say, thank you, Lord. And I tell them that story. And then you'd see tears flowing down her face. Last time I was in China, they were all millennials. I mean, here I'm the Cracker Barrel crowd. But over there, there were all these kids. 
and I thought it was great. Why is there a white rose? And I told them, and I could see tears flowing down their face. They'd never heard anything. That's what you call a testimony. And God will always open a door of effectual for you to share Christ. You don't have to have your Bible under your arm to do that. Just be who you are. Do what you do and be a witness for Christ. And don't be ashamed of his name. Is that a good story? I had a cancellation. I went back to this church in Deland, but it was a big church about the size of this one. And lo and behold, that little lady came up to me, and uh, she just kind of bumped into the sound guy. Actually, I said, who is that? And found out that she was the white rose lady almost 40 years later. To make a long story short, my daughter is taking her to lunch. I started to even call her. I went out to get my phone. I thought, no, I won't do that because I had a feeling time was going to, I always run out of time. Today is Sue's 78th birthday, the white rose lady. And Heidi's taking her to lunch today and spending the whole day with her. And so they have been wonderful friends ever since. A four-year-old and a 78-year-old. And she talks about your mom and dad just like it was yesterday. Can I tell you one more? Okay. I was playing in England. They picked me up in this beautiful Bentley car. I'm not saying I deserved any of it. I felt, I'm just a country boy. I ain't used to this. You can pick me up in a Jeep. I'm good. You know what I mean? I've got a pickup out here. I'm fine with that. But I'm in this Bentley. No, you sit in the back. They had a driver. Take me to the financial district in London, where all these cameras are, everywhere in all the streets before they used to have things. Now you got them in every house, but not back then. And here's all these cameras. This is just a few years ago, not that long ago, about five years ago. And so I'm in downtown London. <laughs> and I went to this church that was, at one time, it was blown up by the IRA. Instead of completely rebuilding, they just put glass where the walls were you know, all blown away. They had glass, and they made it beautiful, and they put these really nice lights in it, and they had a, a like a three-day workshop symposium type thing for these elite uh, entrepreneurs. Some of them were billionaires. They were CEOs of company that had gone to this lady as a therapist, and they just needed her help, and she says, I want to put together something special for them, and I want you to be a part of it. So they took me to her house the day before outside of London. She says, whatever you do, don't get religious. That's not what this is about. We want to help them, but don't get religious because they'll see right through that. Oh, But we do want you to share the story of the white rose. I looked up at him, and I almost started laughing. Like, what do you think that's about? It's about the love of a heavenly father, the faith of a child. I got in there, and I played all this fun stuff. We had a great time. We were in a round robin kind of a thing, and they were just sitting there watching me in, in one room, you know. And I thought, well, it's time to do the white rose. And I looked around, and I saw these CEOs, men and women, and they looked down, some of them were looking down, some were like this, you know, and then I saw some of them that had, and one in particular had tears rolling down his face. After it was over, they had a little reception, and he walked up to me, very stately gentleman, <laughs> who I found out had been going through a whole lot, the loss of his wife, and it just terrible things in his life. And he says, well, I was quite taken by your white rose story today. And a friend of mine that was the host that brought me there heard that, and he came over and said, well, Doyle, this man also has a very interesting white rose story of his own. His name is Phil. Uh, oh, my Lord. It's what you call 67 years of age. Phil Harness. Phil Harness, he said he's, he's a famous rose breeder. He invented and came out with the Lady Diana rose that was so popular. 
all over the world that was on the cover of Elton John's uh, album in uh, honor of her that he played and sang at her funeral. Here's this man who was a, the most famous horticulturist in the world and brought this white rose. Who would have ever thought that would have happened out of Deland, Florida from an autistic woman with the faith of a child halfway around the world that this man and I would meet that man at that day and that God would touch his heart. You see, we, we have testimonies, but they only go so far. I tell you what, it's like the, the, the loaves and the fishes. If you give it to him, I know what I can do with this. But if I give this to him, there's no telling what God can do with this. Amen. And whatever you in your life say, Lord, I may not have a great testimony. I, I may have... I may not have a hook. And Lord, I, I don't feel like I have the testimony like so many other people do. You know, I just go to work, go, go home, da 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 da. My life is boring to me. Who would want to, to know about my testimony? I tell you what, commit that to the Lord and be willing to just be a light and a vessel and a witness for Him. And there's no telling whose life. You'll touch this week, this week, in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for that. Thank you for this, Lord. We are truly, ourselves, overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of our testimony. It's not only going to help the people around us, it's going to help us. I pray that you will strengthen everyone in this room today. I have strength. I quoted this, Lord, before church out of your word, Philippians 4.13, I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything. I am equal to anything. In him who infuses inner strength into me, I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. So we go out with your sufficiency in us. Use us, God. Jesus, use me. Let me be a blessing and a light and a witness to this world that needs it more now than probably ever in history. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Wow. What a testimony. What a testimony. He's played around the world. He's kept his faith from a little child, God's used him to touch a lot of lives. And so uh, that's why we love him so much. Would you just uh, thank the Lord for Doyle and his testimony and give Doyle a round of applause while you're doing that. <laughs> Outstanding. Outstanding. What a challenge. What a treasure we've all, um, we've all been blessed this morning, haven't we? What a treasure to be able to be here. I want to receive an offering for him. Uh, and 100% um, of this offering will be going directly to him. You can write your check to the church, H-O-P-I, House of Prayer International. You can just abbreviate it, H-O-P-I. And what we'll do is uh, we'll combine everything into one check and give him one check for the uh, offering, but 100%. Uh, so if you mean to bless his life, then you'll be blessing his life uh, this morning with this uh, offering. Shall we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for Doyle and his testimony and uh, for giving him his great talent. Wow. We're, we're in awe of you, God, and you give gifts and talents and abilities to people. And it's just so great to see someone so gifted and talented, God, that will just turn it all back to you and for your praise and for your honor and for your glory. And God, we want to thank you for the opportunity that we have to invest in his life and his ministry and his family, Lord. And I just pray, God, that you would not just meet all of his needs, Lord, but you bless him over, overly and abundantly, God, in all that, that he does as he literally goes around the world representing 
you, Lord. And so, Father, we just thank you for this time together, and we thank you for this great, great service, Lord, that we've enjoyed your presence, God, here in such a great way. And we thank you for the opportunity of being a blessing to Doyle. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And if you want to, you can bring your check or your offering uh, and bring it and just lay it on one of these offering plates here on the front. And we'll make sure that it all goes to Doyle. I want to thank you for being here with us at House of Prayer International. Uh, I always like, I, I just love to come to church on the day when you set the clocks forward and I can see, you know, all of my intelligent people <laughs> in church on that uh, particular Sunday. It's, uh, it's always a, a great thing and I, I'm glad that you're here today. I want to thank you for coming. Our visitors, God bless you all, our guests, thank you for joining us today and coming, and I know that you've been blessed today, and so uh, let me just pray a prayer over you, speak a blessing over you, and then we'll be dismissed, and uh, if you want to come and uh, say a few words to Doyle, uh, you can up front, or he may be back at his product table. You got some product out there? You do? Okay. Is there anything else you want to do before you go? Not, not unless I want you to? No, I said, it's okay. All right, whatever you want to do. Uh, and so uh, I have an opportunity to thank him for coming our way and being with us today. And you would help him by stopping by and picking up his uh, uh, latest. You got some CDs out there still? All right. It's, you know, you, you mentioned cassette tapes. And, and now it's CDs, but they say not going to be CDs much longer either. You know, this world's changing. But anyways, uh, stop by uh, the product table, if you would, on your way out and uh, see if there's something there that you'd like to, to take home with you. It would be a, a blessing to him. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious and merciful unto you. And watch over you as you go out and come back in. And may God cause you to prosper and to be in health, even as your soul prospers. And may God grant unto you and yours his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior and soon coming King. Amen and amen. And once again, thank you for joining us at House of Prayer International. And you're dismissed.